Hello everyone, this is Amber with Staying Crafty and today I'd like to talk to you about some different ways to size your images using your Gypsy. The first way that I know of is to change your cursor height. When your cursor is selected it will be blue, just as other items on the map will be blue when they are selected. Right now, with no images on our mat, it's extremely easy to have our cursor selected. Anywhere we click, our cursor will follow us and we'll be able to adjust it. Another good way to know for sure that your cursor is the item you have selected is to look over here because the width will be zero. I can adjust the cursor height by using these balls here. The larger ball makes the image larger, the smaller ball makes the image smaller. I can also click here on the height of my cursor and get more specific. Adjusting with these single arrows makes the cursor get larger or smaller by 0.01. These double arrows here by 0.1. And when I click on the number pad, I can key in any specific size that I would like my cursor to be. Now that my cursor is sized at 2.5 inches, any images that I go get for my mat will start off at 2.5 inches. This can be a real time saver when you have multiple items and you know you're going to be working with them in a lot different size than one inch. They can still be adjusted later, but it's nice to start off close to where you want to be. So let's go ahead and go to the mat and get some images. Mm -hmm. All right. Now they're all grouped together because I typed them all together in a row on the keypad. So the first thing I'm going to do in this case is ungroup them because I'm going to be working with each image independently. Let's go ahead and start with this little owl here. Zoom in so we can see. Basically the same thing. It's currently highlighted in blue. I can use these balls here or I can click one of these to start adjusting. Now, this little chain here is highlighted yellow. It is the aspect ratio link. And what it means is that when I'm adjusting my size, it will change proportionally, both vertically and horizontally. So if I start out with a square, I'm going to maintain a square. It won't skew and turn into a rectangle. In most cases, you're going to want to have this on. If you don't know a reason to have it off, Leave it on, don't mess with it. So we can click on either the width or the height to start adjusting our image. It won't really matter which one since it is changing proportionally. I'll go ahead and select the width in this case and we can do all the same things as before. Adjust by 0 0.01, 0 0.1 or select an exact size. Simple and very handy. Let's go ahead and move on to our next image. Now, I'm going to show you an example in which you might want the aspect ratio link I previously mentioned off. To take it off, you simply click on it. It will become white, meaning it's no longer highlighted, it's no longer in use. Now it matters a great deal whether or not we select the width or the height of our image to skew because it's only going to move in that one direction. So I've got the item highlighted in blue and I can adjust it. In this case I'm going to adjust the width. So by 0.01, can't even really see that, but <laughs> here's by 0.1, there we go, now we're moving. Or even a specific size. There you go. And now, well, let me go ahead and take this down a few notches. Now you can clearly see that it's an oval, it's no longer a circle. So this can be useful, like in this case if you had a card that you needed an oval shape instead of a circle shape for, or you're trying to make a puffy cloud for a scene. Um, it can also work sometimes when you're skewing letters, if you want them to be tall and skinny looking for a specific kind of project, maybe about growing or, you know, whatever. There's lots of ways you can achieve different effects using this, so that's one way you can do it. But as I said before, if you don't know a specific reason you're trying to skew an image, just to be on the safe side, you like to leave this on and then you know you're not um, doing anything strange to your image while you're just trying to give it a basic size. So let's go ahead and move on 
to our square here. Now I'm going to talk about the real dial size. Right now it says that my square is 2.59 by 2.50, but that's not its actual size. It's a true square, so when I click on the actual size button, it lets me know it's actually 2 by 5 by 2 by 5. Great! So, in that case, I probably wouldn't need to do any adjusting. But sometimes, when we're working with the larger sizes, they become quite off. So let's just do a 9 inch square here. Okay? Oops. Doo -doo -doo. Now, if I go ahead and click the real dial size, I find out my square is actually only 8.67 by 8.67. So if I'm doing a book or trying to make a photo mat or anything that's specific, you know, like a car that we need to fit in a certain envelope, we could end up with something that's not truly the size we want it. So that's when it's best to use this real dial size. And then when we go in and adjust our sizing, we know that we're actually getting a 9 by 9 inch square, which as I said can be very important in certain cases. So that's it for today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and please continue to check out my Staying Crafty blog as I have lots of fun things planned for the future. Have a wonderful day!